Ah, Mother's Day. It's a big moment to shell out and show some appreciation for the woman who changed your diapers and wiped your nose and pretended to like your girlfriend. And it's a huge business opportunity for the flower industry. Now you might think that Valentine's Day is the big day, but we spend just about as much on Mother's Day. Two billion dollars. Mother's Day is certainly one of the biggest holidays and always everybody buys at the last minute. <laughs> Designer Sandra Deovando knows her blooms. Her bouquets go for hundreds of dollars. But Deovando is just one part of the $30 billion a year American flower industry. And everything about her business is about getting the timing exactly right. Fresh flowers. For an event, an event you want them to be open beautifully, perfect. And depending on the type of flower, we order them five days in advance or seven days in advance or two days in advance. If there is incremental weather and the flowers are coming and the planes cannot land, then you have to come up with other scenarios. What makes this business so difficult is that roughly 80% of the flowers sold in the U.S. are actually grown someplace else. The most popular flowers, roses, come from South America, where the climate is perfect and the labor is cheap. Getting all those flowers here, in shape and on time, takes some careful choreography. These calla lilies are from Ecuador. They are Dutch grower, again relocated down there. Peonies right now coming from south of France, Morocco, stuff like that. The orchid and foliage farms in Malaysia, you know, 600 acres, stuff like this, just massive. Yeah. Wholesaler Gary Page has been working on 28th Street in the New York Flower District for 30 years. You're talking about orchids from Vietnam. You got to get them down from the highlands of Vietnam all the way into a vase here in New York. How does that happen? How does it happen? Well, you got to grow it first. Growers, shippers, wholesalers, retailers, all are links in what's known as the cold chain, a logistics system that tries to keep flowers refrigerated and fresh as they travel around the world because once a flower is cut, it's dying, and the clock starts ticking. Let's take the example of a rose from Ecuador. Roses are usually cut in the morning, sorted and boxed. That can take 16 hours. Then they're trucked to Quito and packed onto shipping pallets, which takes another 16 hours. They're loaded onto planes and flown to Miami International Airport, about five hours in all. Customs in the U.S. takes anywhere from four to 12 hours. Then they're unloaded and reloaded onto trucks, eight more hours, and finally shipped to wholesalers, which can take anywhere from two hours to five days. Total time, anywhere from two days to a week. What do you think? So that perfect bouquet had a long journey before you decided to buy it at the last minute. The industry's been thinking about your mom's gift a lot longer than you have. What is the vase life? Is it vase, the color of vase life? Vase life, vase life, vase life. Okay. I would say uh, 10 days, something 10 like days. that. Give them a little bit of love, like everything else. A little bit of love lasts a lot better. Does, do those, uh, the, the packets that you put into the Yeah, the, sure. Work? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, preservative. If you don't have those, you know, put a little bit of 7-Up or something, because there's enough preservative in there to keep the flowers ready. <laughs>